Oh hey, how's it going? Welcome to What the Math. Let's talk about money. Let's imagine for a second there are two banks. This bank, Orange Bank, that all, all looks fancy and, and shiny, uh, offers you something called simple interest rate of 100%. So basically, what they're actually saying, if you give us a thousand dollars, if you give us a thousand bucks, we will give you uh, an annual return of 100% on this thousand dollars. So basically, after two years, you're going to have two thousand dollars. After three years, you're going to have three thousand dollars, and so on and so forth. And this is for ten years. So after ten years, you can imagine you're going to have um, ten thousand dollars. And basically, this is they're offering you simple interest rate, simple interest rate of um, of a hundred percent. In other words, if we go back to our previous video, this is also known as an arithmetic sequence where your difference is actually uh, same number, it's a thousand. So this is an arithmetic sequence. So this is bank number one. And then the second bank is, uh, it's it's all small and tiny and doesn't actually shine as much and says, well, listen, we'll give you 50%, but it's going to be compound interest. This is going to be compound interest. Now, this is our topic for today, compound interest. So, you know, which one would you take? And I'll explain to you what the compound interest is in a second, but which one would you take? Decide now. Now, intuitively, you probably pick the left one, but knowing that I'm about to trick you, you should probably have picked the right one. So let's find out what is the compound interest if you invest $1,000 for 10 years uh, with 50% compound interest, how much money will you have after 10 years? And here's a website that actually simulates this compound interest. Um, so let's enter here. We have $1,000 principal amount that we're going to invest. And this is usually called principal interest. That's how much money you invest. And um, then 10 years, we're not going to contribute any money. Uh, we're just going to leave it there. And this is going to be 100%. And right here at the end, you'll see the number that it will give us. Oh, sorry, this is not 100%. This is 50%. 50% interest. And after 10 years, you're going to have $134,107.18. So yeah, you're going to be pretty rich. If you have a 50% compound interest, this number will become $134,000, which is a lot of money, a lot more than $10,000 that you get here. Um, so this is compound interest. So how does this work? Well, if you remember the last video, this is what we call geometric sequence. And I'll explain to you how this works in one second geometric sequence. So let's take a look at how compound interest works. So at first we invested $1,000 um, and our interest rate for this bank was 50%. So that means that after one year, you basically multiply this by uh, 50%, which means that you multiply by 1.5. Um, so because that's 150%, and 150% can also be rewritten as 1.5. Um, so after one year, you're going to get $1,500. That's year number one. After two years, in compound interest, what you actually do is you take this number as your new U1, and you then multiply this by the um, interest again. So now it's 1,500 multiplied by 1 1.5, which will give you, I think it's, I think it's this, I think it's 2250, but I might be wrong. And so on. So now this is the new one and you multiply it again. And so on and so forth for 10 years until you get that huge number. I think it was 134,000 or something like that. And that's how compound interest works. That's why it's so big because this is actually an exponential function. It's an exponential function if you plot it. And it, in other words, it's um, in this case, it's a function of y equals thousands times 1.5 to the power of x. So in this case, this is our function right here and it goes up pretty fast. Now, um, in real life, uh, usually banks don't give you such a high interest. Normal interest for a bank is anywhere between, I would say 1% and maximum I've seen is 11%, but that's in, in really um, sort of, uh, first, uh, no, sorry, third world countries where the banks are just starting out. So they're trying to you know, get a lot of clients. But normally, like in Korean banks right now, it's actually about 2%. So your compound interest for uh, for an investment is usually about 2%. And that's not a lot, actually. 
so we can actually just try this for fun. Let's actually try to calculate. If you invest $1,000 for 10 years, how much money will you have with 2% interest? And normally you would be using the finance function for this, which is available in your apps. And it's the, one of the few um, apps you're allowed to use on the test. But I think it's actually a lot more complicated because if you click on it, this is the one you have to use TVM solver. And you can see there's a lot of different acronyms here that you might actually forget what they mean. Uh, so I find it's a little bit easier to just do it manually. So if you go into the Y function and you basically just type this, which is thousand uh, times and our interest rate here is 2%, so that would be 1.02, 1.02 to the power of x. So that's our function. We're gonna plot it, and then we're gonna look in our table for the value of 10, after 10 years. After 10 years, the value is $1,219, so $1,200 only. So it's not too much after 10 years, because banks right now don't give you high interest. Uh, but uh, different investments work differently, so compound interest is really, really useful to calculate um, various, um, basically how much money you'll be making from various interests. Uh, in the book, though, there is actually a function or a formula that they give you, and this is the formula that you'll also have on your, on your test in your formula booklet, so you need to kind of understand how it works. So let's actually look at the formula. And in the next video, I'll also explain how to use the finance app, but in this one, I'll just, I'll just focus on the formula. Let's start with the first formula that's for interest that is annual. So this is per year, uh, because there's also actually another formula for when interest is biannual, twice per year, or you know as many times per year as possible. Um, so here you have four different things you have to know. So it's FV equals to PV times one plus R divided by 100. Uh, and all of this is to the power of N. So this is what you have on your formula book as well. So let's just dissect this just so you know what it means. The first one, FV, is basically your final balance or final value. So this refers to final value. That's why it's underlined in, in white. Um, and final value basically means, you know, total money at the end. How much will you have at the end? Then we have orange, which is present value. And that's how much money do you have right now in the bank or how much are you basically putting in? So money now. The blue R refers to your interest. So R is interest interest rate. And here's divided by 100 because you're trying to make this um, from percentage to a decimal point. So you can then add it to one and make it into format of you know more than one, one something. And finally red and that's you know how many years are you investing it for? So let's just do it in one example really quickly. And let's, let's actually just use the same numbers we used before. So $1,000 at 2% for 10 years. So we're going to be investing. Uh, we just have $1,000 right now. So FV equals to 1,000 plus 1. Uh, and this is going to be 2 divided by 100. So it's 0 0.02. And all of this to the power of 10 because it's 10 years. And let's use calculator to solve this. So it's 1,000 plus brackets one I can just write one zero two one point zero two without calculating it and all of this to the power of ten and the answer is going to be oh very very little and very very little because I just realized I made a mistake this is multiplied so this has to be thousand times one point zero two so be very careful when you do this and this is where logic comes in. So if it's a very small number, you may want to double check because it has to be this number that we had before, 1218 or $1,219. So uh, yes, this right here has to be multiplication. I don't know why I put plus in there. Um, and that's the answer. And basically that's the function. Now, sometimes you have questions where it's not just annually, it's actually several times per year. And if it's several times per year, this function changes just a little bit uh, you just have to add one more thing here. So this will become 1 plus R divided by 100 times K. And then this will be N times K. And where K is how many times per year will you get this interest? Times per year. So for example, if it's monthly interest, if it's monthly interest, then this will become 12 and this will become 12. Uh, if it's biannual, this will become 2 and this will become 2. 
And really that's it for this particular formula. It's not a very difficult formula and since you don't have to remember it, just remember how to use it. Um, now there's also another concept that's actually kind of the opposite of, of interest or it is very related to it, but it's, it's the, it goes the opposite way and this is called depre depreciation. Uh, and that's uh, letter G. Letter G in your book is the, um, the opposite of compound interest. And it's called depreci or depreciation. Depreciation just means when things get cheaper. And in, uh, essentially it's where this will become, instead of a plus, it's going to be a minus. Uh, and that's a real life example would be, you know, if you buy a computer right now, after about, or a phone, or a smartphone, after about a year, your smartphone will be really cheap compared to what, what you paid for it. Um, same with computers, same with cars, same with things like furniture. Uh, there's a lot of things that depreciate over time. And essentially it's interest that goes negatively. So um, the only difference that for depreciation uh, is, uh, is compared to compound interest, which can also be compound, I mean, it can be called compound interest. It's just kind of like a negative compound interest. Basically inside your brackets, you will have R that is actually going to be, um, that is actually going to be negative. So your R, the letter R is going to be negative. So for example, if you are depreciating at, let's just say, um, 10% per, per year, like something that you bought loses value 10% per year. So inside your brackets, what you'll have is you'll have PV multiplied by one plus, um, R, which will now become negative. So it's going to be, uh, minus 10 divided by a hundred. And all of this is going to be to the power of N. So when you open the brackets here, when you actually uh, get rid of the minus, this will become this whole number. This whole number will become 0 0.9. So when you plot this, you'll actually see that it's actually kind of looks like this. So it kind of looks like this. Um, it's basically an exponential function that this is a thousand starts at a thousand. And then after every year, it's, it starts losing its value until it kind of levels out uh, almost at a zero. Uh, and this is basically, a, well, you know, a smartphone, think of a smartphone you bought three years ago today. It's somewhere over here. It's not even worth that much anymore. Uh, but when you bought it, it was super expensive. So this is the concept of depreciation, or you can call it negative, negative interest. Um, when things lose th their value. All right. So that's really it for F and G. And in the next video, I'll show you how to use the finance function on your calculator. Thank you for watching and good luck to you. Bye bye.